for the nice intro. So, um, yeah, we're cutting off a lot of hair today. Um, creating a shape, we found an inspiration picture. All right, and something we teach at Van Michael is everyone starts with kind of a portfolio consultation. All right, so pretty easy to find something that's close to what you want to see, or close to what the client wants to see, really. And then I always let him know, we're going to do your version of that picture, right? He doesn't want to look exactly like them. And as I'm cutting his hair, I might tweak it here and there to make it fit, you know, what I think will look good. So, first section, starting around the face, uh, as opposed to the back, just so that I can pinpoint exactly where that length is going to fall around his face. So this is I want the most control over these pieces. This is where I'm going to start. And the first decision I really need to make is both how long I want this to be and how graduated I want it to be. So in the picture, it looks maybe like it's almost square, probably slightly tapered in, building up a little bit of length, but never very tapered in, right? Because I don't want that to get too short. The picture has some of those like wispy pieces kicking out through here. And also, I never want to create something that builds up too much weight through here on a guy, um, right? We don't want like a Bozo the Clown kind of look. So section one, before I cut anything, visualizing where I hold this out, where it's going to fall about the years, and then of course, how it's going to shrink up with his hair being so curly. So, so I got to interrupt you for one second. We're getting a lot of people logged on so far. But uh, the thing that they keep saying is this uh, lovely model Christian here has beautiful hair. Yeah. I've had quite a few comments on that, and it's absolutely true. This dude has got some serious hair. I mean, this is not your little um, everyday trim. This is one of those when they come into the salon that for me, I just get extremely excited about seeing this. It looks like he's got great texture, a bit of wave. So, you know, I, I know that you were talking about how you're gonna be graduating it a little bit. You don't want it to be too square, but you don't want it to be uh, too graduated either. And that makes a lot of sense to me, especially when you have as much texture as he has. I feel like if you were to graduate that, say with like low graduation or even medium graduation, you're gonna end up with a real wide shape. And like you said, you don't want that Bozo the Clown look, but I definitely think that what you're doing right now, adding just a little bit of buildup is gonna do really well, especially if you kind of look right through here at Jordan, or I'm sorry, Christian's eyes and right there at that temple area, if you add just a little bit of volume with that natural texture like that hair is doing, it's going to really bring out that cheekbone, jawline, just make him look a little more masculine while still having a very, you know, a good bit of hair. Because this is still going to have, in the men's world, long hair. It's still long hair, right? It's not like close to a scalp like this. Um, he doesn't need necessarily like a professional look. So we want to cut off all of his curls, we want to cut off all of his texture. Uh, so this will still be a nice shape and length for him. You know, so again, you can see like my fingers aren't totally parallel with the ball, straight up and down, almost, just slightly a degree more graduated. So yeah, his, his hair is really quite nice. Uh, one thing that I always like to say, so, you know, Jordan, do you cut a lot of men's hair? Uh, I have a handful of male clients, yeah. So I myself, you know, I, I work in the salon a few days a week and then I work in the barber shop a few days a week. And what we were just talking about um, in the barber shop this morning was how many guys are coming in with long hair. And I mean, you know, we're, we're a traditional barbershop as well, where we do, you know, skin fades, shaves, everything. But this is what we're seeing a lot of, where guys have just not been out and cutting their hair. They've been growing it out. They went through whatever, two months, three months of not being able to get a haircut and got past that extremely weird stage. And they're like, oh, screw it. I'm going to let my hair grow. And so I've been seeing a lot of guys coming in with, with longer hair. Now, I haven't seen... Th that many guys coming in with this long of hair, but definitely longer that, you know, three, four, six inch length hair, which is really quite cool. 
Yeah, yeah. Van sure. Council just logged on and he says he's growing his out. I can't wait to see what that looks That's like. Yeah. I do believe that that is technically called a scullet if you uh, grow out the sides and back and nothing is on top. But I can't wait to see it, boss. I hope it looks great. Yeah, I'm here for it. Yeah, um, we'll put it, we'll, if nothing else, you can just wear one of your beanies while it's grown out on the underneath. All right, so as I'm working around this head, I'm trying to follow the shape of this head, right? So this is gonna be a round shape from side to side, vertically, slightly graduated, but again, each section comes straight out from the head, here, 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 here. So as I'm working around, I don't wanna get slightly longer, build up too much weight behind the ear. I don't wanna get too short, which would then maybe push too much weight in front of the ear, All right? So everything comes straight out, pretty simple. And I'm just guessing, this is my own assumption, but I'm guessing Christian's probably gonna be wearing some of this tucked back, letting some of those hairs maybe be like that picture, kind of a tendril in front, but some of it behind. So if you put too much weight behind the ear right there, it's gonna end up just immediately, he's just gonna feel like it's just flopping and just feels like uh, just imbalanced. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I, I, I would think he'll tuck it back as well. We'll see what happens. So um, getting to a point here where this is a nice little square of hair, uh, before I move on, I'm gonna cross check it. And a key with the cross check is to make sure that you pull the hair to where it was cut originally. Right, so when I'm pulling it out inside my fingers this way, the hair comes off the scalp like that, maybe a little bit less. Cross check should be the same thing. So pull it right to that same spot and that's what I'm looking for. Doesn't Next. look too bad to me. Not too bad, right? And when I do this, you know, we never really cut in our cross check, but I love to like refine just a little bit. And if you're pulling it to the same spot it was cut, I actually do like to cut a little bit more if I need to, almost to create a new guide so that I can then go back in to that same spot and tweak it vertically again. Got it, yeah. Okay. Yeah, I, I, you know, been doing hair for a long time now and I can still remember one of the very first haircutting classes I ever took they told me if you're taking more than a nibble off on your cross check you're taking too much go back through originally all right and so then for me like when I'm cutting hair like this especially a big change I'll cut some I'm looking at it, everything looks good close up and then I'll kind of turn them you know look in the mirror to get a bigger perspective of what you see right so when you're close up you get all that detail over here, you get the big picture, which is maybe hard when like, I'm wearing all black against his dark hair. No, just take a step to your but, right. It's okay. But like that, you can start to see that shape kind of building up, which I'm cool with. So yeah. we'll on. So this is another point as we go into um, going from the front to the back where I'm going to stop and do the front side on this other side. Right? Because I can do a beautiful shape over here. I can do something really great over here. But if they don't match, then you're screwed. Yeah, you gotta, one of them's gonna have to be recut. So, even dampness to always get an even amount of tension with the hair. Yeah, something that people don't think about, you know, um, and I know I was guilty of this for a long time. You, you're working in the salon, you're trying, you're very busy, you're trying to just bust through. You don't wanna wet them down because, you know, if you do, if you wet them down, it's gonna take more time to blow dry, et cetera. But at the same time, it's like, hair's a fabric, you know, and it has an elasticity. And it's got more elasticity when it's wet than when it's dry. So if it is going to stretch and pull more with, the, obviously you've got very strong tension going, it's going to end up, you know, springing back so much more if it's wet than when it's dry. And that's not gonna give you any sort of balance once you, they're both dry. So somebody just asked a second ago, they said, why a horizontal shape? Um, actually, this isn't a horizontal shape. He's been cutting it vertically. That was just his cross check. I think that's when you logged on. He's gonna actually be um, cutting this whole thing with just slightly diagonal back sections so that he can create a little bit of graduation, a little bit of buildup. Um, coming back through around, if you look at Christian's face, 
we were noticing that if he gets just a little bit of buildup with that natural texture of his hair, it's going to let the hair expand just a little bit. It's actually gonna bring out his cheekbones and jawline a little bit. Um, without, if we went to say medium or lower graduation, it would end up being a little bit too wide. I think uh, Jordan used the term bozo, the clown-like. And uh, that's definitely not what we're looking for. And also, we had just mentioned, we know that Christian's probably gonna end up pulling some of this hair behind his ears. If there's too much graduation there, it will end up uh, basically feeling like a clump behind the ears, ends up falling out. Just doesn't end up being real wearable, uh, especially with this mid-length for a man. You really wanna make sure that the hair's real wearable and so that the hair can be, uh, so he can run his hands through it or just live with the natural texture very easily. Uh, ben Brown just logged on, one of my favorite hair cutters to watch. That is one great educator. Uh, hello, Ben. Good to see you. Okay. Now, a young lady named Deanna asks, are you using a cutting lotion? Uh, no, his hair is just wet. No, his hair is just wet. He's just using water. You did wash and condition it, though. Um, yeah, he had washed it himself, and I just put a little bit of a heavier conditioner in his hair. Yeah, I would, I would definitely think with that much hair and with that texture, you would want to have a little bit of uh, something in there to have some slide. You don't want it to end up, uh, you know, you don't want to be catching your comb with that long of hair. Yeah, a couple other people are logging on. Chris Harker just logged on. How are you doing, Chris? Hope everybody's doing well. I hope everybody's safe out there. We're, we're doing great here in Atlanta. The weather's a little cold and rainy, but aside from that, we're doing great. We've been, you know... We've been back open now for 10 months, which is just amazing that our salons have been able to work through a lot of this pandemic. And uh, I know a lot of other salons are just gearing back up. And I can promise you this, there, as you're starting to open back up, there are lots of people with overgrown hair that need serious haircuts. And then a couple other people just ask, you know, what is, I'm working here, this is Daniel Holzberger with Van Michael Salons, and I'm here with Jordan Reese, and uh, Jordan, what's your Instagram handle, by the way? Uh, it's Jordy.Hair. Jordy, J-O-R-D-Y dot hair, H-A-I-R is uh, his IG handle, that was somebody asked uh, your tag on mm -hmm. Instagram, and we're cutting here at our Midtown Salon, this is the location that Jordan works at. Uh, we have eight locations here in Atlanta, and this is our one that is right in the heart of downtown. We're actually in the first floor of an, uh, a high-rise building here, and Jordan's taken his friend Christian here from uh, extremely long hair to a little bit more of a mid-length, still very shaggy, messy, and he's actually creating something with a little bit of vertical sections. He's doing a very high round graduation. Um, somebody just asked, actually a buddy of mine, Rob, who used to work with me down in Miami. Rob just asked, is this square layers? No, it's actually technically very high round graduation. And the reason being, we had mentioned just a second ago, Jordan had said that he really likes the little bit of buildup with the natural texture from Christian's hair. That natural texture with a little bit of graduation is going to add a little bit of height and width just above the temple area, extending out his cheekbones, extending out his jawline, so that he ends up being, you know, looking very masculine while still having a bit of hair. Because he is still in the realm of cutting hair for men, has very long hair, even though we are taking off, as you can see, quite a bit of hair is falling to the ground. So here's another important part of the haircut. As you move into the back, you'll see hairline jumps up through here, drops down. So cutting all of these sections, I'll always have a guide behind what I'm cutting, but as I'm cutting this hair, there's no guide. So your guide becomes the hair that you've cut previously. You have to almost visualize this line going straight down, right? So I continue the same amount of graduation, still pulling straight out of the head as far as where my over direction might be, right? I'm still pulling it straight out. I'm not trying to pull it forward. I'm not trying to pull it too far back. Um, but this is an important part to think about. So a trick could be hold all the hair in the comb so you can get a kind of a grander view of that line. Whereas if you're trying to hold it in your fingers, that hair goes up at the roots, becomes maybe a little more fuzzy to see your guide. Um, so again, visualize, get my fingers right to that point, always combing from the roots. 
follow all the way down. I'm just working my way back up, cutting any little discrepancies, right? Like if you cut here and move your fingers down, you might get what I call knuckle marks, right? Just from where you kind of cut right to that knuckle, cut just below that. There might be a piece that's a touch long, so just cleaning it up. So one thing that a couple of people have been asking about, they're saying it's beautiful, it's great work. They're saying, you know, um, is it, since it's round graduation, uh -huh. so is it being pulled out of the head in each spot? So I think that's something that Jordan was just mentioning on there. Yeah, what he's doing is he's following the head shape. That's why it becomes round. Tends to be a little more square on the sides because your head's a little flatter. And then as he's to this section, pretty much, right where that mastoid bone dips in, the head starts to diminish quite a bit. So by following the head shape, it becomes quite round. Um, and that round will do really well back here, and um, especially as it diminishes away, so that what we had mentioned before, if Christian does tend to uh, you know, tuck his head, his hair behind his ears, he will, um, well, I guess something exciting is going on outside with all those sirens. <laughs> but um, he is, if he does tuck this hair behind his ears, there will not be a big clump of hair. You can kind of see as he pushes it back, it cups in very nicely. And because the head's starting to diminish around, he won't end up with that large corner. Sometimes when we cut men's hair, we think that we're supposed to only cut a square shape because square sounds more masculine. But the truth of the matter is if you go too square here in the back with hair that has a good bit of texture like so, it's going to end up with a little bit of like a tail tag right behind the ear. And that sometimes, especially if you have texture the way that Christian does, it doesn't end up being quite as flattering. Yeah, so when I was practicing for this haircut, I had actually cut square uh, once, and it just gets so long in the back, right? Because it's square through here, and you're saying as the head dips in, it goes, you know, medium length through here, then it gets super long. I always taper that in, but it just felt too, a little too wispy, a little too scraggly on the ends. So just slightly tapered to take uh, some of that wispiness off. But not too much. We were actually just having uh, last week a men's haircutting class in our barber shop, and we were focusing on round graduation. And the thing that was great about the round graduation, um, a couple of the barbers in our shop that week were saying, you know, it's so much better than cutting square because it does add a little bit of a finished look down at the bottom as opposed to being quite as stringy at the bottom. They said that a lot of times whenever you cut a, just a true square layer on a man, it ends up looking a little too mullety, but not in a cool way. And so you end up having to still taper it in. But by using high round graduation, they felt like it basically just tailored it to a man to a finished man's look a little bit better yeah yeah so chris yeah. harker just asked can you use a razor with this haircut or do shears work better with this haircut i would say this i think you can use a razor with any strong shape but especially when you start dealing with a texture like Christian has, I think it would be a little bit better to try to work with a scissor and then just adding a little bit of texture through point cutting as opposed to trying to um, go through with a razor. I think a razor might just add a little too much texture for Christian's hair. So, yeah, I mean, could we do it with a razor? Absolutely. But a razor, I think, really has to do with also what kind of texture you're dealing with. Uh, something that Gerard told me a long time ago when we were talking about razors versus scissors is he said, well, do I think this hair is going to be really easy to blow dry? Um, if it's hair that is super easy to blow dry, always he loves to use a razor. But anytime it, he feels like he's going to actually have to work at smoothing it out, he tends to go more towards the scissor. And that makes a lot of sense to me because the more you texturize hair, the more, uh, more difficult it is to actually polish the hair. So with that said, you um, see Jordan cutting this with the scissor. He can always go back through with the, um, a bit of deep point cutting, even a little bit of slicing to give you a razor effect. And I think that might be a little more beneficial for Christian's texture of hair.
I agree. Yeah, Brandon Dare is telling you how hot you are on. Oh, uh, on uh, so sweet. Thank you. <laughs> So, uh, let's see, what was I going to say? So I think with long hair like this, it's very easy to get kind of overwhelmed, right? Like moving all this hair out of the way. So every section I'm taking, I try and take it from top to bottom. The hair that I'm not going to use, comb it kind of neatly out of the way. The hair that I'm not going to use on this side, I usually don't comb it so far that way. I try and still keep it the way that I'm going to take my next sections. Right, so if all my sections are slightly vertical, I'll try and comb the hair also slightly vertical. And then usually I'll just kind of scoop this hair up, right? Always coming right from the roots to keep everything nice and clean. And before I cut, I'm looking at the roots to make sure that I've combed everything neatly. And then also that tells me where it's coming out of the head, right? And then that tells me if I'm pulling too much, pushing too much. So it's kind of like a scooping motion, and I pull it straight out of the head. There's my line. Cut to my second knuckle or so. And keep working my way down. One thing that somebody just asked this was, could you start this in the nape and work your way up? Absolutely, you could. The one thing that I find, this is just my own personal opinion, is starting in the center, in the back for round graduation, I have a tendency to not have as consistent of over direction. Whereas if this was cut on, uh, if this is cut instead of in the back, from the front, your over direction is just coming right off of the head and your graduation angle is coming right off of the head. It makes it just a little easier for me to keep the balance as well as to keep consistency through both sides. Somebody's also asking, hey, would this cut work on straight fine hair? I would absolutely say yes. Um, maybe do a little less texturizing because when it's dry, I don't think you're going to want to overly texturize with, um, when, with super straight, fine hair. Uh, but I think absolutely you could definitely cut this with straight, fine hair. That might actually be the situation in which you use a razor for. Um, I am a big proponent of using all tools. I tend to use my scissors more than anything, but I feel like you could use any tool you want with, uh, but once you get into that finer hair, if you used a razor for this kind of a shape, but used really didn't open your blade that much, just did very small movements that could have a great look together also. All right. So something else as I'm cutting this left side of his head, usually this can be harder for right-handed stylists to keep your elbow up and work in this way. So as I work down to the nape, I'm kind of pushing his head away from where I am just to help assist me in keeping my body straight, but still get the same line that I want. All right, and then this side might actually be a little more comfortable. It's slightly lower so that my shoulder uh, doesn't have to stretch too much to get the kind of correct angle to keep my, my posture comfortable. Whereas on this side, maybe just a touch higher so I can keep everything always kind of cut you know, almost right in front of my chest. So someone just asked you, says, why are you starting with a guideline at the bottom? Really, he's not. But once you have your guide set in place, when you're on the left side of the head working to the back and your fingers are pointing down, it's a little bit easier for him to work up into his fingers. You're cutting, see the way that he's cutting up into his fingers versus cutting at the top down. That's why he's actually doing it. It's really that he's oh, getting- to like this or something? Yes, yeah. Mm -hmm. And so what ends up happening is it ends up just being a little bit more consistent for his over direction by him working and cutting up into the shape. He will actually cut down on the opposite side, but it just has to do with your finger angle and the control of the hair. Uh, Brandon actually said again, he said that this is looking sharp, clean, 
And uh, another one of our educators, Becca Job, just logged on. She said, killing it, dude, which everybody who ever watches Jordan cut hair knows that he definitely can cut some extremely pretty hair. Uh, I guess, I don't know that Christian wants to be told that he's pretty, but yeah, he th he's got pretty hair. That is for damn sure. And uh, those are some squeaky clean lines is what we're hearing out of some people also. Oh, nice. Thank you. Yeah. So, uh, you know, I went quite a few sections without cross-checking, which I try not to do um, because I find, you know, every couple sections, I usually tend to change my line in a way that I don't want, right? So every couple sections, I kind of go back in, fix it, go back to that same spot, fix it vertically. Something Brandon actually told me once is like, uh, something like every hairdresser screws up, but good hairdressers go back in and fix it, right? So each point, I'll tend to keep the hair longer if I feel like I'm gonna screw up, right? If I'm not sure where to pull this hair, I'll pull it in a way where it might end up a little bit longer as opposed to a little bit too short. It's always easy to take more off. It's harder to glue it back on. Exactly. So always cross-check in every couple of sections for me. And for those of you who've just logged on, this was extremely long hair when Jordan started. You can see all around the chair, there are some long hairs that have been coming to the ground. So he really, his friend Christian here is really getting a, a total overhaul on this. Yeah, he said he agreed to uh, do this video. And in the last 24 hours, he started to grow attached to his hair. <laughs> <laughs> So, yeah, too late, buddy. Sorry. Yeah, it looks great. I think you should just leave that. I was thinking about it. Yeah, right very much like a jellyfish. Switching sides. I don't know why I was there. Gerard just logged on. Hey, buddy, it's great to see you as always, my friend. And thank you for always hosting us and having... Uh, you know, having us do some education for you. We love doing education for Hairbrained. You know, one of the things that I love the most about Hairbrained is the fact that it really gives us a sense of uh, community in the hairdressing industry, especially nowadays with, you know, everybody being online so much, whether it's, you're talking about working remotely, whether you're talking about just being entertained, it is a great way for us to all stay connected and really share education. And yeah, thank you for sharing hair with us. We love sharing hair with you. And I know if you were here right now, you'd be a little jealous because look at all this hair that we've cut on the floor already, man. It is, we are cutting some hair. Yeah, thank you, Gerard. Appreciate it. And you can see we're working around. Essentially, for those of you who've just logged on, essentially what's happened is Jordan here started off with extremely long men's hair and his friend Christian here decided he wanted to get back into somewhere more of the, you know, normal realm of mid-length hair. And we started off here, the front hairline. Jo um, Jordan decided that he was gonna cut something with very high round graduation. Didn't wanna do anything low because we felt like if we used any sort of medium, uh, medium angle or low angle graduation, we would end, I believe Jordan used the word, we might have Bozo the Clown going on. Because Christian here does have a bit of texture in his hair, as you can see, it's a really nice soft curl but we wanted to build up a little bit of, of weight just above his temple area. You can almost see here on the right how perfect it's building up to just above the temple area. And then it cups right in with his cheekbone. That's gonna really elongate his jawline, make him a little look just a little more masculine rather than if we would have done traditional round graduation or even low gr round graduation, um, more of like a, you know, uh, Prince Valiant look, it would end up being way too wide. And so here we are just seeing so much more 
um, of a user-friendly shape by being a bit, a bit more vertical. And so my friend Thelma just logged on and said, I'm amazed on how he holds his scissors. Well, that's something that he's really good about is actually moving his hands around, um, only using one blade. One thing that I learned a long time ago, and I'm still stress all the time, is when you cut hair, you should really only be moving one blade. Uh, when you end up using multiple, both blades, you tend to push the hair. The velocity of one blade going down to a still blade makes a much cleaner shape. And so you'll see Jordan like he is right now, just moving his scissors around so that he's never arcing his wrist. He's basically making it as easy as possible for himself so that he can just cut very clean. Yeah, so usually it's like the still blade here rests on my middle finger. And I can just move my thumb if you only work to there, you should be fine and never cut yourself, which I don't do. I cut myself all the time. But same thing on top, right? Second knuckle. You can see the scars from where you go further, so don't do that. Um, but yeah, it's just kind of practice. Something one of our educators told me when I was learning to scissor over comb is to keep your shears out while you're doing nothing, sitting around watching TV on the couch. Right? Yeah, if you're binging some Netflix. Kind of keep a, your still blade on your knee and just practice moving your thumb. So when you have that still blade so steady, it's easier to isolate that muscle because it really takes a, a little bit of practice to keep that flat and just move that one thumb muscle. Um, Debbie asked, what shears are you using? Are you using the Van Michael shears? You said the Van Michael shears. I think they're, what, what size is that? That's like a five, five and, and a half, half. yeah. They're pretty small. Yeah, so he's using the Van Michael shears. We actually have our own shear company. Um, I will put in your comments the actual uh, connection for their website. It's just www.vanmichaelscissors.com. But he's using a five and a half inch shear. So fairly small. That's actually as large of a shear as I ever use. I was taught originally on four and a half inch shears. So using a five and a half, to me, feels like I'm using a barbering shear. But he's... Um, using that smaller shear or in a more refined shear, which is a slight offset, so that he can use just his thumb when he's cutting and so that he doesn't have to, you can look and see at his wrist right now how straight it is when he's cutting. He's not arcing or torquing his wrist at all, which makes two things happen. One, it actually makes sure that you um, are cutting clean, that you don't have to add tech extra torque, which ends up dulling out your scissors. And then two, it also just keeps your wrist from hurting at the end of the day. I mean, I, I know that after 25 years of doing hair, my body has been beat up. So I think if I was not using a good proper form and technique, I would be really beat up. I just don't know how somebody could do this career for a long time if they did not use uh, proper technique with not only with cutting hair but styling hair every bit of the way the way that you stand you really want to make sure that you keep yourself uh, taken care of through the years of cutting hair so it looks like you're just crossing over center now my friend just crossing over center and this is going to be the stopping point for this side so this will also start to give me a guide at least on the bottom so that as I work this way I'll have somewhere to work straight to and uh, hopefully they'll match up All right, but I'll take this section and maybe just one more on this side yeah I know that myself whenever I'm cutting anything round I like to go just past center on both sides so that I don't end up with any kind of a wedge in the center Somebody just asked, is this a boy or girl? This is a man. This is a, uh, this is a young man named Christian, but you would think that he was a uh, extension model at one point in time because he has a lot of hair. This, uh, another question comes in and says, I have fine hair and very straight, um, but when I curl it, it has lots of body. Um, would this look good on me? I have a blended, yeah. So here's the thing about this. Absolutely. If you're somebody who curls your hair, a shape like this can totally be curled. The real truth of the matter is that this haircut is really designed to work with Christian's natural texture. We're not trying to do too much as far as the, um, as far as 
styling to his hair. We don't, you know, most guys don't really want to do major styling. Um, and yes, he did start on the, the sides first. Uh, he started on his right side and worked to just behind the ear, then moved over to the left side, right behind the ear, and now he's connecting through to the back. And you can see as he just combed all of that back, this hair really, with its natural texture, is just going to fall right into place because he's following the head shape. Yeah, I think so. So like, uh, again, something I always like to do is as I spin them, I can use the mirror a little bit more to get, again, just like a kind of grainer view of what's going on. All right, and I see how everything fits right into his head, building up a little bit of weight, but not too, too much. All right, again, still the silhouette is mostly flat, All right? And I'll probably end up losing most of that. So. Yeah, I'm liking it so far. <laughs> you're gonna, you're gonna drown in this hair. Yeah. <clears throat> so again, back to this side. A lot of people will tell you to comb from behind on this side to help ensure that you pull this hair this way, right? Or Helps you pull it maybe straight out of the head more, which is what I'm trying to do. And so for me, I don't know why, but it feels just a little more comfortable to come from this side and scoop it into place. But I'll do both sometimes. And I'd say try both and see what feels good and what creates the best results for you. Somebody just asked, where is our salon located? We are located in Atlanta, Georgia. We actually have eight locations here in Atlanta, Van Michael Salons. Um, and this is actually our Midtown location. This is right in the heart of Midtown um, Atlanta. We are right on Peachtree Street. For those of you who've ever been to Atlanta, know that Peachtree is the main street that runs through the city. And we're right here, um, that right here, right on, I believe we're on Peachtree and 9th. Uh, here in uh, the Metropolis building on the first floor. But yeah, we are located here in Atlanta, Georgia, and I'm cutting with uh, Jordan Reese, who is one of our educators. He teaches all of our staff that work in the um, new talents as well as our apprentices. But then also he does clients right out of this location as well. And it looks like you are about to be done with this underneath. Yeah. Again, just a little bit of length. So again, I'll kind of cross check and find the spot where I start to get just a little bit long. Which is maybe about right here. And I think all of that can come off. So when you're cross checking, and especially if you're cutting pretty cleanly, it's not just looking for discrepancies in the line, kind of shorter, longer pieces, um, but it's checking the shape, right? So when I check this, if I check it over here, I'm like, that's a straight line, it looks good. But again, his head shape is more like that, not like this. So I'll go back to that point and start to round just a little bit more through there. So I'll take a big cross check section. Not big, but. So somebody just mentioned that it froze up. Is everybody still able to see us cutting? Is, uh, are you able to see Jordan's fingers moving? Let me know if I need to um, re uh, log out and log in. I, as far as it says on my end, everything is still good. Hopefully that is just somebody's connection of their own. Okay, good. We're all good. Thank goodness. All right, so backtracked just a little bit, lost a little bit off of that section. <clears throat> And then moving forward, that creates just a little bit more. And you can see by Jordan taking that little bit on that first section, each section is a little bit more that comes off. And really, I think that was probably due to just uh, foot positioning. Um, to be honest with you, I think it was because he was standing in so much hair, he didn't want to keep walking over to the right because he's been taking so much hair off of Christian today. 
Uh, question is, is he taking any more weight out of the back occipital bone area? Um, we're not there just yet, but I do believe there's gonna be some more hair coming off right here in the occipital bone, but he's actually right at the occipital bone um, as we speak. Now, once you kind of cross over from one side to the other, you're, uh, you definitely have weight in the center. Uh, it's not, it's no sort of a point, no sort of a wedge, nothing like that, but you definitely have weight in the center because it's round. Anything that's round follows the head shape. The head's most round or largest point in the back is your occipital bone. So right there in the center, there's going to be the largest amount of weight. So we will probably see Jordan go back through and have to take a little more length or weight, or maybe just make it a little more vertical so that it feels balanced through to the sides. So, um, probably what I'll do is just create this shape as solid as I can. As I blend this, I'll see how much weight gets built up through here. And then, just like Daniel was saying, maybe take a little bit more of that buildup of weight off through here. Um, but it's kind of, uh, kind of like going with the flow, right? Any haircut I do, like I was saying, even if you look at a picture and say, I want to create something like this, it's going to be their version of it. Not just their version, but his and mine. So both what he wants to see and what I want to see in the haircut. And what's going to happen. You know, I know with myself, as I'm working with hair sometimes, I see that, oh man, this really curls up more than I was expecting, or it lays even better than I was expecting, or wow, as I take just a little bit more, I like it even more, a little lighter, so I'm going to go lighter. That's the great thing about hair cutting versus, say, like hair coloring. Um, I know my wife is a hair colorist for years, and... I always relate the difference to like cooking and baking. Like I love to cook, my wife loves to bake. She likes to figure it all out, put it together, put it in the oven and leave it alone, just like uh, coloring hair. Whereas myself, I really like to work with it. As I'm cutting hair, I like to add or remove, take a little bit of weight out, you know, maybe t make it a little bit more uh, heavier, make it a little bit lighter, texturize it a little bit more. And that's no different than when I'm cooking. If I'm uh, making any kind of a sauce and all of a sudden I feel like, hey, it needs just a little bit more uh, salt or it needs a little piece of, uh, pinch of sugar, I'm able to make those adjustments as I go. And I'm a big fan of doing that when I'm cutting hair. Yeah, I'll do the same thing. And there's always a point uh, when you're cutting hair where maybe you're not totally sure, especially when you're beginning. And I would always go back to trying to use your portfolio consultation, look at a picture, and then also ask your client's opinion, right? Like if I'm like, maybe this is too wispy, sometimes I'll say, I love it. I'm like, great, I don't have to cut that anymore, you know? So always checking in to see what they feel as well. Yeah, my boss Van loves to talk about the one of the salon owners he worked at with uh, back in the 70s. He used to tell him, cut hair until she smiles and then quit. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> like just learn to work with your client. If you need to make adjustments for them, that's what you're supposed to do. That's the difference between actually like if you were to buy a really nice shirt and just try to wear it right off the rack, it's not going to sit nearly as well if it's been as if it's been tailored for you. And that's the thing that you can do with your client. You can start working with it. You look at the picture. That's the, that's the piece of clothing you buy off the rack. And then as a stylist, as a professional, you need to actually tailor it for that person. And that is, that's all about checking in with the client while you're doing it. You know, the, there's nothing in the world that I like less than the hairdresser who all of a sudden gets done with the client and the client's like, oh no, it's just a little too heavy. And then they get upset about it. If you would have been talking to your client during the service, if you would have been checking in with them, as you said, you would have probably gotten through that and not had to worry about recutting at all. Yeah, absolutely. So as I'm working my way up into the crown, I am taking these sections just a little more square. All right, so I'm almost working from it's kind of round graduated into like a round kind of layer, um, but not totally. I'm not pulling it straight off the head. I'm sort of just pulling it out. 
So it's almost like you're creating a flat layer, almost more perpendicular to the floor, yes. but you're still making the actual shape on a horizontal plane. You're making that round. So from going from center, it's uh, from the center to the left or center to the right, it follows the head shape and it's round. But instead of being graduated like it was before, now you've flattened it out. And I'm sure that flattening that out is going to do really well with Christian's texture, especially in this area where the crown would be, where he's got a little, he doesn't have a major cowlick by any stretch of the imagination, but he does have a little bit of a growth pattern. He's got natural texture by creating that kind of flat layer, as opposed to rounding it off and making a convex layer. It's going to keep a little bit more weight. It's actually going to create a little bit of an internal graduation. Um, if you look at that hair right now, even though he's cutting it square or flat, that hair at the top is longer than the hair at the bottom. So he's creating a little bit of graduation, which is going to build up a little bit of, um, that will build up a little bit in the crown and it will actually make the hair move and keep it from feeling flat. I have a strong feeling with his texture, if you were to go actually straight up to convex, you'd end up with a gap in the hair. You'd probably end up with hair that pushed up at the top and then hair that collapsed at the occipital bone. And you'd have this little ridge area that I'm sure people have seen, you know, standing in the grocery store or at Target, somebody at the back of their head where their layers and their graduation just don't blend together. And by creating this flat layer with his texture, I think that's going to be significantly better than if he would actually round off. Yeah, for sure. I never want to see this too flat. So yeah, keeping a little bit away, but again, not too stacked. So I've had a few people ask, are you going to make this, leave this shaggy at the neck or are you going to clean it up? No, I'm going to clean that up. Not, uh, not quite squeaky clean. I don't want a strong line right here, but I'll probably chip into it, right? And I'll just kind of feel it out when it's dry. All right, so working into the top. What I'll do is... So I think this is your mother-in-law is told, telling you to speak up. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, taking a section uh, from front to back on the top, and I'll start to use the hair that I just cut in the crown as a guide for what I want to, for the shape I'm going to create. And... Again, I'm not going to follow that um, true like round grad where it still builds up a little bit of weight, but I think I'm going to make this a little bit flat on top. Because again, the silhouette in that picture had kind of a square top working into that. Um, and I'm going to keep just a little more length towards the front. So again, taking it from a true kind of square like this, just slightly diagonally and a little more length in the front. So there is my starting point. So it looks like you're gaining just a little bit of length. So technically that would be a concave shape, even though it's not an extreme concave. It's just going slightly longer, slightly opposite of the head shape, but you are gaining a little bit of length in the front. So it looks like you took that vertical section, basically hinged the last bit of the square in the back and brought that up and then moved that forward through to the front. And then just kind of messing with it, seeing how it might all look together, trying to visualize the shape. Um, and again, I think I'm cool with that. You can always lose more. Yeah, you can always take more off. You can't put it back on. So then that's going to be <clears throat> kind of uh, like a safety section for me working through the rest of the top. So from here on out, there's what I just cut down the center, right? And I'm just making it flat from there. So you're flattening that out, that, that flattening that out is going to keep a bit of a corner through the side, which we had mentioned on the, uh, when we were talking at the very beginning, we liked that little bit of buildup of weight just above Christian's, uh, his, uh, his temple area. So now that you're keeping that longer hair on top, but you're cutting it square, it's going to actually probably extenuate even more of that little bit of focus of weight just above the temple. It'll also give him a little bit more hair because it's disconnected from the sides, right? It is right now. I'm going to blend some more through here. 
But in the front, I think I'm gonna keep it disconnected. Yeah, I think that leaving that disconnection is gonna add just a little bit of interest, especially if he likes to flip his hair back and forth. Um, I mean, a lot of us, well, not me because I don't have hair anymore, but I do remember even when I did have hair, you know, throughout the day, like to wear it back and forth. You know, somebody just asked, does it matter where he wears his part? Not if you're cutting it square like this with that disconnection, because it's going to be able to be flipped over from side to side, even uh, parted in the middle. I highly doubt as a man with mid-length hair, though, that he's going to part this in the middle. I think it's um, probably that you're going to see a little bit more of something just kind of pushed back and over, maybe using just a little bit of like a cream or a pomade to kind of work with that natural texture of his hair. Are you going to flip it, Christian? Yeah, I'm going to flip it. <laughs> cool. So each section pulling slightly back. All right, so again, when I'm watching the roots, that's to ensure that I'm combing everything neatly. All right, so maybe I could even do it a little bit neater. Combing everything neatly. And again, I'm looking for this shape where that line goes straight up, this line goes slightly back to it. Just gaining a little bit of length. A little bit at a time. Yeah. Again, it can be very overwhelming working with this much hair. Oh, yeah. I mean, I, I'm very proud of you not, like, getting your comb caught in the length of hair yeah. that you're combing through. I mean, this is a lot of hair that Christian's cut off. It's really, it's, it's awesome hair, too. I mean, he's got this great natural wave and texture so that it can really, uh, it's amazing watching me being here in person, watching the hair jump and move and just see how the texture's coming alive. But at the same time, you've kept enough length on the hair that it doesn't look like it's um, going to be overwhelming to him whatsoever. Uh, I think that sometimes when you go from sh long to short, it can become extremely overwhelming for the texture of the hair. The, the fabric of the hair just reacts so much. And so I, uh, I think that you're doing an amazing job at keeping, uh, basically playing with that hair just right. So you're doing the exact same thing or exact mirror image on the opposite side, right? Yeah. So you, you took that vertical section, basically his flat layer in the back, he just brought up, hinged up to the top of the head, and then worked a slightly diagonal, slightly concave shape, getting longer towards the front. Then you've been taken and used that as your guide through both the left, through the left side and now through the right side, where you're over directing each horizontal section back just into each previous section so that you're gaining length through the front, correct? Exactly. Thank you. Awesome. Cool. Oh, and one of my good friends, Stephanie K, is on. She says, Yay, Jordan. Hey again, Daniel. Stephanie, it's great to see, uh, see you here in, uh, in the virtual world. It's been too long since I've seen you in real life. Um, and we are just getting through to the front hairline. So Jordan, I got a couple questions uh, that have been going on. They've asking, you know, is he gonna wear it on one side? Is he gonna part it? What were you planning on doing as far as styling his hair? Are you gonna be putting anything in it? Are you gonna be diffusing it? Are you gonna let it air dry? Um, I know personally myself with a lot of my guys, I know they all want to talk to me about when they have this longer hair, they want to be able to just use a product and then let it air dry. Is this something that he's going to be able to do that with? Yeah, ideally he would um, because he's not going to style it. So yeah, a little bit of product just to... You mean he's not going to like curl it? He's not going to curl it. He's not going to get a little round brush in there and blow it out. Um, I hadn't really decided what I was going to do today um, because... You know, since he's one of my good friends, I feel like I can blow it out, even if it's not exactly what he wants, just to double check the haircut. Um, but also, I don't know, I haven't decided. So I'm, I'm gonna finish this and maybe go through and diffuse it, I don't know. Yeah, I was gonna say, I like that natural texture coming out. Too, yeah. 
You know, um, once again, I've said this a couple of times to everybody, you know, I work in our barber shop as well. I do a lot of men's hair. And in the barber shop, don't get me wrong, I do a lot of bald fades, I do a lot of shaving, but I do a lot of medium length hair or what I would consider long hair for a barber shop quite a bit now. Coming out of COVID, so many of uh, my clients or clients to the shop are people who still haven't went back to working a regular desk job. They, they're still working remotely and they've just went a long time between getting their hair cut. And since they've went such a long time, they've really liked having this longer medium length hair. The only thing is they're really big about hey, I've just been kind of lazy for the last couple of months. I am not getting ready to, I don't want to have so much hair that I have to blow dry and style and make it look, you know, absolutely perfect as far as being a man. Yeah, so um, all that kind of goes back to your consultation, right? Like if it's something that needs to be styled, that's something that you need to mention to them right off the bat, right? Before you cut something that's high maintenance. And also how long you can go between haircuts. Like this shape might grow nicely for a little bit, right? Whereas that bald fade kind of grows out pretty quick. And oh, yeah. Come back sooner. Man, um, if I go two weeks without a haircut, it just shows how bald I really am. That's awesome. So um, I'm going to go through and start to blend the sides a little bit. Like you're saying, I, I do like this being disconnected. Yeah, I think that this connection looks awesome, to be honest with you. Yeah, so a couple of people have said it's shaping up nicely, and a couple of people have said that's got he's got great movement to the hair. Movement would be the best way to describe his texture. It, it grows a little bit. Like I can show you guys on this opposite side, it grows just a little bit, but not out of control at all. A lot of times when you start dealing with uh, especially cutting this much hair off, you start seeing hair really jump. Hair that just like becomes way over over the top where it starts to ex um, basically shrink up and expand. You start seeing gaps in the hair, but instead really what he's got is just really nice movement, which uh, I couldn't use a better word than that. A uh, young lady named Debbie said that it's got great movement. Um, somebody asked a minute ago, and I forgot to mention this, um, they, uh, or touch base on this. They were asking if we were in New York State at all. No, no, ma'am. We are only here in Atlanta, Georgia. We, um, we used to have a couple salons down in Miami, um, but we don't uh, have those anymore since uh, it's been a couple of years ago that Van sold those. We do have sister company over in Japan. It's actually a completely separate company, but um, they have their own corporate office and everything, but they're a sister company. We do education with them. They come over here. I go over there. Jordan's been over there. We all have a tendency to, uh, you know, we have a great, um, I guess, a marriage of two companies with the uh, Van Council salons in uh, Japan and they're throughout They're They're based mostly out of the Ibisu area in Tokyo, but they are throughout the entire country and um, But our salons here in the States are only here in Atlanta So as uh, as it's starting to shrink up I'm kind of seeing that yeah You probably are gonna clean up a little bit of that little mullet at the bottom But probably leaving some of it a little longer than say like a true clean classic haircut because of his natural texture yeah, absolutely. And you guys can really see he's got awesome texture. I mean, it's just, uh, once again, what uh, the young lady who mentioned it before, uh, his the best description of his hair is nice movement. Yeah, so, yeah, earlier when someone had mentioned, uh, am I going to take that a little bit flatter in the back? Like, at the time, it did look like it needed to. But now that it's shrinking up, it looks like, yeah. and you I know, that's because this was clipped up as well, right? So when you have this kind of contrast of, this hair being so flat in the clip and this hair kind of doing its own thing, it's a pretty big, uh, pretty big jump, right? So I think it's helpful to start to finish the bulk of your shape before you make any big decisions about cutting more or cutting less. I'd say get your classic shape in there and then really kind of dissect and see what else it might need. <laughs> Somebody just said, leave the mullet just for fun. 
I, no, I mean, I think honestly, like looking at this, I would probably clean up that little bit on the outline. But aside from that, I'd really like to see you work with what he's got because it really doesn't need a whole lot more. That uh, I've, So something that I tell people a lot, especially when we start talking about uh, students or people that are fresh out of beauty school, I loved texturizing hair when I was fresh out of school. And the reason I loved it is because it added movement to the hair. Um, but what I didn't realize is not every haircut needs texturizing. Not every haircut needs to add. When you start dealing with certain textures of hair, there's already texture in it. That's for why the word is called texturizing. So with me, you know, I do believe that every haircut needs to be refined in some way, shape, or form, but it doesn't always need mean that you need to add texture to it. Because if you've got great movement and great hair, don't, you know, don't fix what's not broken. Yeah, so I think Daniel was saying we've got just a couple minutes left. So I'm just going to give you guys the plan, which I think with Christian, what I've decided is I'm going to give him kind of that Snoop Dogg blowout and get all this nice and <laughs> shiny, nice and smooth. Go back through, probably I will point cut into those ends, probably just that last quarter of an inch. Very minimal, because again, I don't want to see a lot of frizz with his curly hair. So just make sure everything blends, especially where I might have left some corners going from graduation into the square. You can see that link right there. So I'll soften that up a little bit. In the front where I've left this disconnected, I'll probably go through and just working kind of right in the middle of that C shape of the curl. I'll start to slide cut, pushing back a little bit, right? So anytime you're creating movement in here, short pushes long. So as I slide cut away from his face, that might make it easier for him to kind of push that stuff back. And yeah, that's probably it. So before we leave, I'll probably miss it just a little bit, get a little more product in there, get some more of his curl back in there. Um, but I'll probably refine this dry. Yeah. So a couple questions real yeah. quick. What products did you put in there? It looked like you saw you put a little bit of the Aveda Speed of Light, which is um, which is a bit of a like a detangling blow dry accelerator, as well as the Aveda Men's Grooming Cream, which uh, I myself work it in the barber shop. That's probably one of my two biggest go to products when it comes to men's hair. So Jordan's going to be finishing up here. He's going to take off a little bit of this. Uh, hairline and i'm just gonna jordan can you pull up that pick that original uh inspiration pick because i really want to show everybody how well you've taken that inspiration and really turned it into being a uh, uh customized four so we went from Was here yeah yep yeah, to here if you just kind of change that part just a little bit you're, you're, you're rocking on the same look, man. So really did customize this great for Christian's hair. And I just want to tell you again how impressed I am by all of this hair that is on the floor. So I just want to tell everybody thank you very much. I want to say thank you so much, Jordan, for doing such a great haircut. And we will be back in next month again. And we are looking forward to doing some education every month for Hairbrained uh, here on Hairbrained Live's um, Facebook Live site every month for the rest of the year. So thank you guys so much. And uh, we will talk to you again soon. Thank you. Thank you.